Assalamu alaikum and hello Doha. A very warm welcome to you all on your favorite talk show segment of What's Up Doha with me, your host Zunira Malik. So viewers, as it's the beginning of the year, I'm sure every one of us must be having some resolutions to work on, some goals to achieve and most importantly, trying to make every day better than the last one. Likewise viewers, my celebrity guest today is going a great distance to deliver at maximum for the great state of Qatar. He is considered to be a prime player of social media when it comes to represent Qatar in all walks of life. He truly has taken the image of Qatar to another level. He has been awarded as the Entrepreneur of the Year by ICT Qatar. Then he took an award for Young Achiever by Arabian Business. He is also an ambassador of Qatar National Cancer Program, known to all of us as Mr. Q of Doha. Founder of the most popular digital network of Doha ever, named as ilovecutter.net. It's truly an honor to have him on our show today. So let's welcome the man behind the huge concept, Khalifa Saleh Al Haroun. So hello, Mr. Q. First of all, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. So what is this mystery behind Mr. Q? How does this name came out and everybody's calling you Mr. Q, Mr. Q? <laughs> what is the mystery behind it? Uh, well, I don't know if it's a mystery, but uh, I wasn't always known as Mr. Q online. Uh -huh. I was known as Amnesia. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Q doesn't have to be related with anything starting with Q or something? Well, Mr. Q came about later on uh, when I started to answer questions that people had about Qatar. Okay. And of course, it was questions, Q, Qatar, Q. So I was like, uh -huh. okay, I'll Mr. Q. So tell us more about your, how did you started the concept and how long did you live in Doha? You were born here or not? And just mm -hmm. your journey. So I was actually uh, born in England mm -hmm. and uh, I don't remember anything at all. So I was literally just born and then next thing I remember Member is I'm in Bahrain, okay. and uh, most of my family actually uh, was uh, uh, was born and raised uh, in Bahrain in general. Okay. And that was because um, before Qatar Airways existed, mm -hmm. not sure if you're aware, but there was an airline called Gulf Air that Qatar oh, yes. and a number of different Gulf countries were invested they used to in. Cover, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the main office was in Bahrain, and that's my father used to work for Gulf Air, and so that's why we all relocated or he relocated the whole entire family there. Okay. And so um, soon after I finished, you know, from uh, uh, from high school, that's when I went to the UK. Mm -hmm. to get my degree. When I was done, I came straight back to Qatar and mm -hmm. I actually felt like a Qatari that was an expat in okay. his own country, you know, so to speak. Uh, it means your family is still there back in Bahrain? Well, actually now my whole family is here back in, uh, okay. in uh, Qatar. So and how so come you, uh, like you took this decision that you are going to live in here? Uh, well, in Qatar? My, my, I mean, my, my aunts, my uncles, my uh -oh, grandparents, you everyone have lives family. in, in okay, Qatar. Okay. It's only my direct family, who is my, my father okay. and my mother and my sisters, mm -hmm. you know, that lived in uh, Bahrain. Okay. And of course, though, all the while, while I was living in Bahrain, whenever there was a special holiday, whether it was Eid or Ramadan, I was here in Qatar. Mm -hmm. It's just that I didn't live like So the links were here. already there and of you course. had this in your mind, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, what about your journey to Isle of Qatar and how did you start? Was it the first thing you did or is it was like something you were just talking about your question answer thing online or how did you basically start it? So Isle of Qatar was, was never a master plan. It wasn't something that I planned to do. You know, mm -hmm. Some of the best things you know in life just kind of just happen, right? True. And um, I guess I need to take a step back to, to share a quick story that when I, when I first graduated from high school mm -hmm. and it was time for me to go to university, my flight was at 6 a.m. in the morning, so that means it meant, meant I had to be there at 4, so I had to wake up at 3 to get to the airport. And so my grandmother, God rest her soul, um, she was the one who woke up, the only one from my family that woke up early morning, cooked me some nice breakfast, traditional breakfast, and she started to ask me, she said to me, Khalifa, you know, well, I know that you're, you're all going off to study law. Yes, that's what I went to go study. But have oh, you yeah, ever you are LLB, right? Yes, yeah. And then coming into the network and social media. Well, that, I mean, that was always a passion, you know? Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. so the passion was yeah. always there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so she said to me, well, Khalifa, well, have you thought about becoming a doctor? Mm -hmm. And I've got a thing with blood, by the way. I don't know. Now, some people have that, but like, if I see blood, I want to faint. Okay. <laughs> so I said to her, listen, you know, Grandma, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I can't handle the blood. She's like, it's fine. I just wanted to ask a question. And then she started to cry. Oh. And just she as fast as she cried. She serious, it means. Yeah, well, maybe, you okay. know. And she started to cry. She's like, oh, you know, I really, yeah, I, don't, I don't consider you my grandson. You're like my son. And uh, you're going to go off to university. But then she stopped crying. She said, you know what? There's no point crying for people when you know they're going to do great things in the world. Mm -hmm. So fast forward, went to uh, university, mm -hmm. ended up meeting a number of different people from different communities and they said to me, the first question was, 
What's your name? Second question usually is, where are you from? Yeah. Third question is, where's Qatar? <laughs> so the first time, second time, third time you answer it, finally you get frustrated. Mm -hmm. So one day a Japanese girl comes up to me and I was in a bad a mood. A Japanese girl, yeah. okay. And I was really in a Seems bad mood. Seems interesting now. Yeah, yeah you know, okay. it gets interesting. And we're hanging out at university and then she asks me, where's Qatar? Mm -hmm. And I was so upset and I just said, Google it. <laughs> okay. And that's the day that I discovered that Japanese people will actually do what you tell them to do. So the next day she comes to me, she said to me, I googled it, I can't find much information about Qatar. And I never thought about googling my own country before, right? Went online, couldn't find much, some stuff was out of date, yeah. and I decided to put together a quick page, which has eventually evolved into the network that you see today. Okay. Yeah, so that's the, the short story. What were your vision and what were the supports you had at that time? I'm sure at that time people were not aware of social media and the networks, of course. Mm -hmm. What were your vision and how did you actually start it? So again, my goal was just to share as much information as possible about mm -hmm. Qatar. And it was, that, was, that was as far as it went, you mm -hmm. know. And um, later on, I realized that a lot of people had a lot of questions that they needed answering. And so I would roam many different forums and just try to answer and support people wherever possible. And eventually, some of the users ended up coming to me and telling me, hey, well, Khalifa, we want a for our own forum on Al Qatar. So I said, okay, we'll put up a forum. Some people said we want an events guide. I said, okay, we'll create an events guide. Mm -hmm. So basically, whatever the users asked me to do, I just did it because I wanted the users especially to feel like they owned the mm -hmm. platform. And so that's why, that's why what it is today is like you just can't find a general repository of information about it, whether it is news or whether it is what's happening or whether um, it's some cool videos, you know, that we put together yeah. as well, um, like Q-tips. It just kind of just, we just went with the flow. And so mm -hmm. whenever we had a really cool idea, just went for it. So did you have your friends along with the, you or the support? What were your support that time? Actually, I didn't really have much support, to be honest. Okay, you, it was a one-man show, you, you're trying to say that? Oh, when I first got started, I taught myself how to do a bit of coding. I taught oh, myself how to okay. use Photoshop. Oh my and God, it I was means sitting, yeah. you did a lot of hard work, man. Yeah, it was, it was, just, it was just me on my own. Mm. And <laughs> I, I was always you know, passionate you know, about, uh, about you know, web design in general, as gro you know, growing up. Mm -hmm. And I was literally, it's, you, know how, you know, like many popular websites or mm. companies start out in the garage? Yes, That's yes. exactly how I started out. It was in the back of my father's house. Mm. Um, I, was, I would sit in the room and I would work on it. In fact, my, my father would get really upset with me because I was always on the computer okay. trying to figure out how to make this work. You know, okay. can you imagine? Like, I don't have it any experience with the code. Time, yeah. And I'm like trying to change, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and he would always just be like, Khalifa, you're always on the computer, you're always on the computer. And nobody could understand what I was trying to do with Adam Qaba. Mm. Uh, to them, it was like, how is this a business? So, um, I didn't really get much support but I, I pushed through it and I knew that if I genuinely believed in what I was trying to do and I could make something of it, mm -hmm. people would eventually you know, accept the vision. But how come people were relating to you? They were asking you questions. Why were they you know, relating with you so much? What was the one thing in you that, pe that made people to relate with you and well, I mean, look after you? Like? I mean, I was always honest. You know, okay. with, 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 with my answers. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, I'm always, you know, friendly with people. Mm -hmm. And so I made people feel comfortable enough to, to an, you know, ask me a question. Uh -huh. And I think this word kind of spread pretty fast. Like if you needed answers and like, I don't know, how to get a visa yeah. to, you know, where should I go apply for a job to, is it true that it's illegal to wear a thobe if you're not a Qatari, you know? It's okay. just, people start to ask me just random questions and uh -huh. I was always there, you know, to, to answer. Mm -hmm. It's not about me, yeah? It's, it's about all the amazing people from all over the world that helped to, to contribute to Isle of Qatar. Mm -hmm. We've got hundreds of volunteers, by the way. Okay, so uh, you have a volunteer program as well? Absolutely. Right? Okay. Um, and how can people volunteer? And what, do, what do they have to do? They just need to reach out to us. And it's so super easy, whether they oh, send okay. us an email at contact at or I'm sure for our viewers, it's, it's, this is something really Good Absolutely. info for them. Yeah. How can they contribute to Isle of Qatar? And there's a variety of different things that they can contribute to. So there's charitable causes and community related stuff, like okay. such as you know beach cleanups. We did like a mangrove cleanup. Mm -hmm. We've actually were a part of the anti-racism campaign. Okay. Um, there are also some of the more social stuff. So we also participate and partner up in a number of different events in the country. And what about your employment? How do you employ people? Like if somebody wants to work with you? So I get. <laughs> <laughs> a number of CVs every single day. Okay, and I'm, I'm sure about yeah, that. Yeah. I'm not looking for experience. Experience mm -hmm. is good. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for talent mm -hmm. and I'm looking for attitude. Mm -hmm. And for example, somebody had sent me a Snapchat the other day <laughs> and it said, you know, like I do this and that and 
I don't mind saying so, but you know, I'm I pretty, do snap I'm, I'm pretty, you know, No, well, she's like, okay. I'm pretty awesome at what I do. Oh, okay. And so I was like, wow, this person's pretty confident. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll give that person a chance to prove uh -huh. that okay. that person's awesome. So that's what that's what I'm looking for. True. And again, one of the reasons why Alif Qatar became popular is because we spend a significant portion of our profit to support charitable causes in the community. Yeah, I read about um, it, which is amazing. And that and that's why we exist. We've supported over 50 charitable causes. In the community. Yeah, so, so far. So Great. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And you know, yeah. as as we all know, in in, in, in our religion and our culture, we, we believe that God will give you ten times more, more than what you give you, back. More if you, yeah, if so, you give back. That's yeah. true. How do you manage people? How do you like uh, support your Isle of Qatar? And how do you do uh, everything? It's very interesting because my model in the very beginning wasn't. Somebody would say, "Okay, well, what do you want me to do, or mm -hmm. what jobs do you have available?" Mm -hmm. I would work backwards. I'd say, "What do you want to do?" And if it just happens, so happens that what you want to do is what I need, I'll hire you. Now, how do you manage everything together and? I'm sure you're very young and achieving so many things, mashallah. You know, used to admire growing up as a kid mm -hmm. was James Bond. James yeah. Bond, oh my yeah. god. James Bond could do everything, okay? He could jump out of planes, <laughs> he could be the best fighter, he could speak every single but language in the world. That was a movie. I know it was a movie, <laughs> okay. but to me, growing up as a kid, it was like, how the hell is this guy doing everything, you know? Okay. So I always had it in my mind that I would want to try to do as much as possible. And that was the first thing. Second thing was, um, it was unusual because I always had this feeling that I might die young. Mm -hmm. And it was a fear that I had in myself that, if, okay, if I'm going to die young, I want to make sure that I do as much as possible in life. And I want to leave behind a legacy, like something that people can be proud of. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when, when you're gone, do you want people to remember you for, as a person who's just set up a business, no, no, you want to be, you want to, you want to... Exceptional, yeah, yes. something exceptional. Something that people can be proud of. Okay, so Mr. Q, how do you manage your time? And what do you do in your free time? The question that everybody asks me. Yeah. <laughs> um, to be honest, uh, first of all, if it's not in my calendar, mm -hmm. it doesn't exist. That's rule number one. Okay. okay. So, so that's why I always tell even friends, mm -hmm. if you want to make sure that I'm somewhere, just make sure you send me a calendar invite, okay? Okay. <laughs> the second thing is, honestly, I really don't think about my calendar too much. Mm -hmm. So what do I mean by that? Like, of course, I know that I've got certain things to do throughout the day, mm -hmm. but I don't think too deeply in it because I feel like when you think too deeply about meetings and schedules and what's coming up next, you end up stressing yourself out. Of course, yes. And so I really just go with the flow and, mm -hmm. uh, I also try to hit multiple birds, not two birds, multiple birds with one stone. So I'll tell people to meet up with me in the same area or oh. if I'm going to a coffee shop, for uh -huh. example, I'll, I'll just tell a number of people like, let's all meet in the same place. Uh -huh. And the coffee shop becomes my meeting, my office uh -huh. space. So okay. every half an hour, somebody will go and come and go and come. <laughs> So, I mean, that's, that's how, I, uh, how I manage it. And of course, I have a really uh, fantastic team of people. I have, for example, a woman, her name is Zarina. Mm -hmm. She's the one who manages uh, most of my appearances and the gigs, you know, that I, that I go to. Okay. I have uh, a woman named Selwa. She's my executive assistant, and she mm -hmm. helps to, you know, reply to things that uh, don't need my personal attention and mm -hmm. to schedule everything. So, Which is very at the end important. of the day, it goes back to mm -hmm. what I was saying before. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. I've got a great team around me, you know, that helps me to, to Support, yeah, to that's know, your support, some, yeah. To, to My next question is going to be a little bit controversial because here I'm going to ask you, like, you were Katri and you achieved this much and everything was, uh, I think, if people say over here, if you're Katri, everything is smooth and there are not much difficulties when you are doing a business or something. Whereas, compared to I, others, expects over here, it's difficult, the tasks are really difficult for them to do. I, I want to know your point of view on that. You know, it's disappointing because a lot of people think that just because I'm Qatari that everything was handed over to me, mm -hmm. you know? Like, here's yeah. the key, key yeah, to a yeah. Land Cruiser and here's your business and everything is great, you know? No, Like no. people say, you know, Qataris no. are born with the gold spoon. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, it's a diamond spoon. No. Uh, diamond, oh yes. <laughs> Get it right there. Diamond no, no, spoon, no, yeah. but no, seriously, I mean, it's not true. It's not true. Uh, it's not okay. true at all. I mean, first of all, I, as I mentioned, I had to go through a lot of hardships just to set up my business. Mm -hmm. And um, everything that I set up today, what you see, uh, my family wasn't a rich family. And okay. We have an expression in Arabic which is that uh, uh, when, when people are hard workers, they're known as hamir shughl, which if you translate it is donkey workers. Okay. <laughs> so we'll break our backs like donkeys, you know, to, mm -hmm. to work hard. And so I had to start everything from the ground up to the point where I had to get my first job and I put every single real that I could get out of my first job, you know, into a special account so that I could pay for whatever mm -hmm. was needed, you know, for my business. Okay. So it, it, it definitely wasn't easy. And the thing is, even when you go to set up a business, 
it's not like they're like, oh, Qatari? Oh, here you go, here's the license. No, it's not the case. Yeah. Whether you're, you're a Qatari or you're an Indian or Filipino or British, it doesn't really matter. The rules are the rules and they apply to most people. Mm -hmm. So just like, I guess, and the thing is, like, I, I really also don't like this type of question, you know, where people try to separate Qataris from expats mm -hmm. because I'm working so hard to try and remove that gap, you know, to bridge that yeah. gap. And mm -hmm. when people ask it, it's kind of like it's creating that line between us. Mm -hmm. So it's not about Qatar versus expat. It's not about nationality versus nationality. It's good versus bad. Yeah. It's hardworking versus lazy. That's the way that I see it. Okay, so where do you see yourself in the next coming five years? I'm constantly trying to grow the I Love Qatar uh, mm. network. And not a lot of people know this, but my main company is called Hug. Okay. It's Harun Najid Group. And it has a number of different investments, so I invest in many different businesses in mm. different sectors. Mm -hmm. But it's I Love Qatar that's been closest to my heart. Okay. And so I still am focusing on launching um, the radio station. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm and it's, it's going to be launched soon, right? The radio station? When they give me the license. Okay. So. It's been two years of waiting. Oh. Okay. And they, at the time when I went to them, they said it was going to be a month. So oh. when they give it to me, that's when we're going to launch it. I've, I've recently, you know, invested, you know, in a couple of different uh, startups as well. Mm -hmm. One of them is called Rakami TV, mm -hmm. and Rakami TV is um, the world's first professional Arabic technology channel. And okay. in a year, mm -hmm. uh, or just over a year now, we're about to hit pass a hundred thousand subscribers. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I'm really happy to see that. So I just see me growing, you know, the IOQ network. Okay, let's talk about your segment Q-Tips. Q-Tips has been a really fantastic show. We're gonna, the, ch the Isle of Qatar uh, channel on YouTube is mm. now gonna pass four million views. Wow. Uh, oh we've uh, just, we finished uh, season two of Q-Tips. We're gonna be starting with season three. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been really great to see, you know, the, the fantastic feedback globally mm. with Q-Tips. Like That's I've cool. received messages and photos of people in Indonesia, in France, in um, Japan, uh -huh. in uh, Malaysia, of people watching Q-tips, yeah. and I never thought that it would become so big. No, it but, is. Uh, I must say it's really interesting. Even when you, you know, when I was going through it, I couldn't stop myself. I had to stop. <laughs> otherwise, I was like, next video, next video, <laughs> yeah. next video. So it's really amazing, and it's a lot of like so much of humor is there. Yeah. At the same time, a message is there. It's brilliant idea. Yeah. So there's humor and there's a message, message as you said, yeah. from one of the, the the government entities. They said that they had done a, a survey and they asked people when we mentioned Qatar, what are the words that come to your mind? Mm -hmm. And so they they thought of the stereotypical stuff: oil, petrol, money, yeah. you know, desert, camels. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, true. So then they let them watch a couple of episodes, or a different group at least, mm -hmm. a, a couple of episodes of Q-tips. Mm -hmm. And then they asked them, what do you think when we say Qatar? They said, fun, friendly, hospitable, oh. you know, funny. So this it's, is how they change their mind. So yeah. it's, 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 it's interesting. I would like you to give a message or guidelines to the youth following you and who wants to become like you. First of all, you don't need to be wise. You just need to just do something that you really believe in. And just be a good person. Um, as I mentioned before, it was nice to be nice. And if you're a business person, I'll tell you a quick message, you know, that, or a quick lesson that my father, you know, once taught me. He said, he asked me, he said, Mi Khalifa, when you go into a, a business meeting, what's the purpose? I said, to do business. He said, wrong. He said, the only purpose of going into a business meeting is to walk out with a new friend. And so I think at the end of the day, I always go into every single experience that I have just trying to make some new friends. So just be a good person. I'm looking forward to seeing what you, the viewers, uh, can do to make Qatar and the world a better place. Wonderful. Now, after this, you came to know about WhatsApp Doha when we approached you, and I'm sure you must have gone through a few uh, information about WhatsApp Doha. So I want you to give your views on WhatsApp Doha and what do you feel about this medium and if you have some guidelines or tips for us. I think it's, it's def definitely really great to see you know, more people create some more content about Qatar because that's what creates, that's what helps a community become a community. And so uh, keep up all the great work and uh, I'm you know, looking forward to seeing all the cool stuff that you guys do and uh, take some risks and uh, do some uh, you know, unique things. Mm -hmm. Things that take you out of your comfort zone just now and then. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I think you already know this, you already do this, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, just listen to the audience and just mm -hmm. whatever they want, just give it to them. Of course, <laughs> we will definitely work on that. And thank you so much for being on the show. It was truly an amazing having you over here. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. You took time, your precious time out <laughs> for us only. No, it, it really means a lot. Thank you so much. I had a thank great you. time with you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So viewers, this was Mr. Khalifa Saleh Al Haroon with us today, known as Mr. Q of Doha founder of ilovecutter.net. 
I'm sure you must have enjoyed the episode as much as I did. I will leave you with a note that think big, act big, believe big, and the results will surely be big. Until my next exciting episode, take a lot of care of yourself. Goodbye. So, okay, before we leave you, I would like to mention that we have a gift hamper for you from our sponsors, Perry Gallery, which is only for the guests on What's Up Doha Talk Show. So, gift hamper is all yours now. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can run now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It was really a great evening, I'm sure. Pleasure's mine.